on the remote island of South Caicos. Students at the School for Field Studies Diver's ready. get ready for a dive. Going in in three, two, one, roll. Their mission? Documenting the health and status of the local reef. Coral reefs are among the most biologically diverse and highly productive ecosystems on Earth. While they cover a mere 1% of the Earth's surface, they contribute billions to the global economy through tourism and fisheries. Students break into teams and head off to complete their assignment, looking for signs of coral bleaching. To do that, they assess the color of specific species of hard coral by comparing it to color swatches on a slate. They're looking for coral that appears to be losing its color. Coral bleaching is essentially coral under stress, and this coral is stressed out by warm water. Sea surface temperatures are rising as a result of climate change, and corals are very sensitive to even small increases. It's important to monitor the changes to the ecosystem over time to track how fast we're losing our reefs, but also to see where they're doing well. When successful conservation occurs, it can serve as a model and hopefully be reproduced elsewhere. South Caicos is part of the Turks and Caicos Islands, a British overseas territory that lies just southeast of the Bahamas in the Western Atlantic Ocean. At the School for Field Studies Field Station, college students from across the U.S. spend a semester submerged in marine research. Much of that research takes a close look at the study of human impact on the marine environment, including climate change. Cell Caicos, like everywhere, is subject to climate change. So, I mean, that, that's a global issue, obviously, that we're affected by here. When you do climate change studies, you do need long-term data sets. So what we've done is we've established permanent baselines out in the field, and we have four sites that we chose, two very close to the cut in the channel, and two farther away. And then we also have three depths at each of these sites. South Caicos is a perfect place to study human impact on the environment. Its marine ecosystems are still relatively healthy, the local community is small, and the land has seen little tourism development when compared to the neighboring islands. Students want to learn what might happen here when all that starts to change and how to prevent degradation to the environment. Pretty much all the types of marine habitat that people study are all right here. And they've been relatively unaffected by uh, human interaction. Now, they're, they're not pristine by any means, but compared to other places in the Caribbean, uh, there's been relatively little anthropogenic impact on these habitats. So it's a very good opportunity to, to see the habitats in quite good condition and to be able to study them uh, before anything happens to them. In their quest to gather data on the environment, students at the school are not just focusing on the water temperature and the reef. They're also taking a look at the mangrove habitat. 50% of the world's mangroves have been lost through coastal development. And people realize that mangroves are extremely important habitat. Uh, so in a lot of places now, mangroves are protected. As a primary habitat for juvenile fish, the mangroves of South Caicos are a priority for research. To study the mangroves, one group of students is going at it from a unique angle, sharks. Research-wise, what we're looking at is how the um, nursery habitats around South Caicos are used by the sharks. Although we picture sharks being out in the open ocean environment, at different stages in their life they might be utilizing inshore habitats. For example, the lemon sharks that we have here, they, they inhabit the shallow areas, so the mangrove areas and the seagrass areas, just like a lot of reef fish do. My specific um, position in the research team is looking at distribution trends and how development might affect those nursery habitats and if it's a significant effect in a negative way. Island development will come eventually, and long-term studies on mangroves by the School for Field Studies will help new businesses that establish themselves on South Caicos to develop sustainably. Already, the data has proven valuable. But along the western shore of the island, we have quite dense mangrove. They support 
quite a variety of fish species and they're generally juveniles of reef fish and unfortunately at the moment there are plans to develop a lot of the island and one of those developers is actually planning to remove some of the mangroves. They had a team down from the US to conduct an environmental impact assessment recently and we were able to share our research findings with that group to kind of provide them with some information as to how important these uh, habitats might be. That's one of the ways we can contribute to conservation of the area. The whole country economy is basically hinged on the environment. And here in South Caicos, which is the main uh, fishing uh, island, everything then goes back to the environment again. While possible future development is a concern for South Caicos, overfishing is an immediate and growing threat to the marine environment due to the ever-expanding demand for food. So several of the School for Field Studies research programs monitor the health of the species vital to the fisheries industry. Finfish, lobster, and conch. The data collected is shared with a government agency called DEMA. DEMA is the Department of Environment and Maritime Affairs, which is the government agency responsible for managing the natural resources, the environment, the reefs, protected areas, the fishing industry. So basically manages all those entities. Basically every research activity where we're engaged in, um, there's some involvement uh, with SFS. And we're at 1.1. The ongoing research conducted by students at the School for Field Studies is extremely helpful to the government in managing the often competing goals of development and conservation. As the population of South Caicos slowly grows, not only is there more demand for food, but there's more trash. And trash can be a big problem on a small island. It's like a lot of islands whether here in the Caribbean, whether in the Pacific, everything gets packaged and, and brought here and then the packaging nobody knows what to do with afterwards. Not all of it's coming from here, of course, but go out to Long Beach, you'll see plastic bottles, water bottles, chlorine bottles, buckets, packaging, nylon ropes, all these sort of things. And it comes in twice a week and they use it and it has nowhere to go. So it just ends up on the streets, ends up in the bush, ends up in the water, ends up in the water, ends up in the fish, ends up in the fish. Even on the most remote islands with no local population, marine debris washes up on the beach. It's a constant problem for all islands, and nobody really has a solution. I have students looking at the impacts of marine debris on the coasts. If, if this island is going to turn into some sort of tourist destination or any, if it's going to change at all and they're going to manage their island and their lands a little bit better, all the garbage that washes to the shore needs to be accounted for. So I have a couple students looking at that and the economics behind that. Yeah. South Caicos provides an ideal learning environment for students at the School for Field Studies to study nearly pristine marine environments, learn how those environments can change with development, and propose solutions to reduce human impact. By working with the Turks and Caicos government, the School for Field Studies has a real effect on helping to sustain both the human and natural communities of South Caicos. And as a study abroad program, it offers real-world, hands-on learning opportunities for college students passionate about the ocean. <laughs>